So it was very natural. Everybody was there. Why? Because 95% of all labor force was a state labor force. All Cubans were a state employees. 95%. Only 5% of Cubans work on a private basis. Farmers. No private sector in Cuba. Only farmers. 95% of Cubans were living on a state salary. In other words, a salary and income was the same thing. 25 years ago, in the late 80s. And in the late 80s, that range, 100, 450, included everybody, almost everybody. The heart surgeon, the university professor, the elementary school teacher, the guy who cleans the street. They were within that range, 100, 450. Very narrow. So, estimates are that after the crisis started in the early 90s, 92, 93, 94, in these years, during the crisis and after the crisis, the policies implemented to cope with the crisis, those changes, the crisis and the policies, increase in inequality. Because income and salary split two different things, two different categories. Or um, teach a class, or I have to work in something else, or I have to receive any kind of remittance from abroad. My next door neighbor doesn't work, but has a son who lives in Detroit. And that son sends him every month $100. $100 is four times my salary. So on the basis of remittances, many people that have relatives abroad may have an income that is much higher than the average salary of workers. This is an example of factors, factors that are influencing inequality. For instance, if I am a farmer and I sell all my product in the free market, my income is a hundred times higher than the worker salary. The policies implemented to cope with the crisis, including free market, or the opening up of a free market, the expansion of a non-state sector, of a private sector, estimates are that today, remember that 25 years ago, private workers, farmers, were 5% of the labor force. Today, estimates are that the private sector is between 20 and 25% of all workers. All private sector workers have a much higher income than the state workers. Then there's a there's a unequal, uh, asymmetric a structure of income that is part of the transition, is part of the changes. This is not a, this is this is not how things are supposed to be, but this is how things are right now. Yes. Can't hear. We're allowed, but number one, we're meaningful, meaningless in terms of the people's real income. What allowed? Any question? Okay. Where remittances allowed before the special period? The answer is this: one dollar before the special period was changed when remittances was coming in one measure. In other words, if my aunt sent me $100, what I got was 100 pesos. 100 pesos was the minimum salary. So it was, was good enough, but the majority of people didn't need these 100 pesos. And the majority of Cubans living abroad were not sending money. 
He got well at this.